Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CX Goalkeeper podcast. Today I am really thrilled because I have really a great person on the podcast, Karl Scharitz. Hi Karl, how are you? Hello Greg, I am fantastic. How are you? I am well, well, because I am going to invest the next 20 to 30 minutes discussing with you about your career, unpacking your career in customer experience. And therefore, I am super thrilled to kick off this discussion. Thank you very much. Oh, ab absolutely. It's as usual at the beginning of the podcast, we introduce today's top player. Carl is our top player today. Uh, today and therefore, could you really quickly share um your elevator pitch who you are what you where you come from um well for today i mean i came from a lot of different places <laughs> but what i do today is really focus on the discipline of customer experience as it pertains to brand new people coming into the profession and there's a lot of reason behind that which we can get into here but It actually stems back from the time where I started down this pathway back in 2004. And there was nothing, really nothing much I could put my hands around, you know, to say, how do I learn this discipline? How do I learn these techniques? Where do I go? What do I do? Who do I talk to? There weren't too many things around then. That's That was 2004. But here we are, 2023, you know. A lot of years later, and that's my focus. That's my mission and purpose in what I do today. I mean, I had many missions and purposes earlier in life, <laughs> you know, when I started out in uh, in business. But uh, that's that goes way back in history. I don't know if you want to explore any of that. but This will be the topic of today. So we will unpack your career because it's an extraordinary journey that we can go through. And today we decided together to tackle uh, another topic, a career of a CX profession as you are. And therefore, um, let's only ask one question and then we really try to unpack your career. Okay. Which values drive you in life? To me, I think just being true to myself is the biggest value that I can bring to the table because there's no point in trying to be anything other than you are. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why people <laughs> may choose to not be who they really are. But I mean, I think that's the only way I can be, you know, it's kind of like, take me as I am, you know, and uh, I'm usually, usually people respond to that. Usually people respond to that. That's my one kind of one value that I carry with me is being true to myself. And I think this is really important also in our career. And now let's really start uh, the game, this discussion, unpacking your career. It's extremely interesting what you shared with me. How did your career evolve from the military to chemistry, becoming a leader in customer experience? Oh my gosh, that's going way back here. So I think, um, as you know, I spent four years in the military. I was in the United States Air Force between 1968 and 72. And if you remember, that was back in the Vietnam War era. And so people like my age that at that time were getting drafted. So I decided to join and do something proactive with my service. And so, you know, you can consider me coming almost jumping right out of high school <laughs> into the into the service. And so I didn't really have a lot of preparation before that you know a lot of, of other of my colleagues you know were going to university and things of that nature but i decided to do that first before anything else and so that was a good four years and i you know obviously had the opportunity to make that a career but i decided that wasn't a career for me that's a different kind of environment if you know the military is a very command and control environment um i I, I lasted four years. <laughs> I, I worked with that and I got out honorably. So I have to say I did my I did my time and I'm happy to have done that. You know, and I made a lot of friends there, too. You know, a lot of lasting friends. So that was good. And then when I got out of the Air Force in 72, it was a matter of, OK, what am I going to do now? Actually, I was married at the time, so I needed to work. So I had you know found myself some some employment. It's something I could do. 
And then I decided that, you know what, I missed the college university experience. So I need to go to school to learn something. And the only thing that I can think of was, I remember the periodic table of the elements. <laughs> and there was somebody who employed me who was really keen on the fact that I could remember. And I knew that AU meant gold and AG meant silver and PB meant lead. <laughs> And that got me my first kind of position in, in the sciences. And what I did was I, I coupled that along with going to then signing up for a university program that was done during the evening. So something I could work and do, uh, you know, do school at the same time. And that was actually a quite an experience there because I did that over eight years, eight years. And I got my bachelor's degree in chemistry. And that led, you know, every time I learned something new, and this kind of goes along with kind of a life philosophy too. Every time I learned something new, I wanted to do that. So when I learned inorganic chemistry, I wanted to do that. When I learned organic, I wanted to do that. When I learned physical, I wanted to do that. And when I learned analytical chemistry, I wanted to do that. And that all those desires in succession led to a position that I was in with a company where I was an analytical chemist. But the interesting thing was it was in a marketing group and I was working with customers. And that became kind of a new uh, passion of mine was working with customers. I did that both in an analytical chemistry, proving the, the concept of what they were trying to accomplish. But then I was also working with them in the training group. So I was working with customers from two different angles. And so that kind of got me headed off into a pathway of learning and development. And learning and development was, was the sec, kind of the second phase of my university life. Okay, I went for a master's degree in adult learning and adult education. So coupling those two together kind of led me from one position to another and finally into a role where I was doing customer uh, work within a marketing group. And uh, one day, one day uh, back in, I think it was probably 2003, I was attending a company meeting and the service manager got up in front of the employee population and said, proud to announce that they had 98% customer satisfaction. You know, everybody's clapping, you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this and I'm like, how could this be? It didn't kind of click with what I was seeing when I was working with some of the customers. And so I had a little discussion with my boss at the time, who was a VP of marketing. And he said, I don't think anybody in the leadership team really believes that. So I said, oh, well, this is interesting. So that started some wheels turning inside my head and wanting to investigate what's this all about? How do we get to 98% customer satisfaction? So one thing led to another. And what I discovered was it was a system designed and built to deliver the results that that vice president of service was looking for. And I thought to myself, no, this, this can't be, this can't be right. This has got to be done differently. So I decided to just think about it for a while and put some of my thoughts down on paper, in fact, in an email, send it to my boss. And all of a sudden, about a couple of weeks later, he calls me into his office and says, Carl, you seem to have a feeling for this customer experience, customer service stuff. Can you... Help unlighten me a little bit more. He had a conversation and then he finally said, how would you like to be in charge of that for the company? And what could I say at that point? <laughs> what kind of an answer could you give? I'm like, okay. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about that as a move and a career path, but you know, like the ocean in back of me, these are all possibilities here. I said, why not? And so then I was given a position to manage customer experience for a very large uh, North American manufacturing company. 
And there yeah. I was. This is 2014. I'm sorry, 2004. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. 2004. Uh, I think you mentioned earlier 2004 is the day, the, the year that's changed your career path definitively. Um, before uh, going, continue this, this career path, you, you mentioned several things that I, I think that are in, really interesting. And one thing that you mentioned, it remembers me, great experience in the past, chemistry. I can remember that I had a great teacher and we were also discussing about chemistry and I really enjoyed um, chemistry because the teacher was great, was helping us organic, inorganic chemistry. I still remember what, what it is. And I think after... 25 30 years it's 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 incredible that that i still remember that and you can probably still balance a chemistry equation too <laughs> yes <Maybe>. probably <laughs> but you mentioned that and this is um, english is not my mother tongue i don't want to make too many mistakes that people cannot understand but you spoke about this uh, periodic table i can remember also some <laughs> of the, of the elements on on that but only with uh, with Italian words. Therefore, I'm not going to, to 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 quote that. But I think what you're saying it's really interesting. And what what bring me to think about this chemistry is also you need to find the right balance, as you said. And this is can be also strongly linked to to customer relationship because you need need also to find in in customer experience and customer relations the right balance not too much, not not less, because you want to keep the relationship with them. You mentioned right. this year 2004. And um, I think in 2004, not everybody was speaking about customer experience as we are doing nowadays. Which which challenges did you face? Which which resources did you found to really build up this 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 CX team on and this CX? Uh, yeah. Discipline. Well, I mean, that's a good question. And you are right. In fact, when I did land the position, I had a team. I had three people that, you know, were reporting to me, but they were part of the problem that the other uh, the other system that they had in place was a system designed to um, give them the results that they wanted. So given my new thoughts about where this should go, I mean, there's a there's a term that we use in the in the in the US and it is says calling somebody's baby ugly. <laughs> Understood. Which, which I found myself in the position of having be but being in that position because I had to identify that this system was not a good system. So I had to overcome a lot of challenges, which I did, you know, eventually doing that. But you're right. There wasn't a lot for me to uh, to rely on in those days. So, you know, like anything else, you know, I learned from going through school. You know what I mean? I learned through, you know, research projects in the chemistry field and stuff. How do I discover these things? I just start asking people. I just start talking to people. I just start investigating who out there really is a name in this business that I should maybe look at, look at. And though, you know, LinkedIn came along and I was, I've been a member of LinkedIn for many, many years. And I just started seeking out people, which led to uh, people, you know, involved in conferences. So I would sign up for conferences. Luckily I had an organization that would support me to attend to some of these conferences. And then I started looking for different uh, resources like webinars, like online webinars. So, you know, again, it was just all putting this puzzle pieces together just from what was out there at the time. And as you say, 2004, there wasn't a lot. Um, what happened, though, was in 2011, an organization came into existence called the Customer Experience Professionals Organization Association, or CXPA. As soon as I understood what that was and what they were doing, I just raised my hand, I signed up, and I just jumped into the deep end of the pool, as they say, you know, and swimming for my life, right? <laughs> deep end of the ocean that you see here. Um, so, you know, that was really a game changer for me because then I met lots of people and I volunteered for just about everything that I could so that I could not only learn at the same time, but keep contribute as I wanted to during that time. So as far as the organization goes, I've been a member for many years. I was a 
I was served on their board of directors for five years. I, um, I, I was an MC at some of the events that they were running, the annual events. Um, they started up a series of local networks around the globe, all around the globe. And I was actually one of the first ones to start the one in Boston, Massachusetts. So, and that still is an ongoing uh, thing. I'm not involved anymore, but that still lives on past me. So, you know, it was that, those years were very important, informative years, you know. And of course, you know, working in the profession, one gets, you know, I started working with vendors. And so I started learning a lot from the vendors in the profession as well. I worked with several of them. And you you pick up a lot of things. And, you know, something along the way that I picked up was uh, <laughs> Fred Reichel, and who I actually went to see at a conference one time. And he talked about this thing called Net Promoter Score which I got you know, kind of excited about, as a lot of people do get excited about. And I brought that into the organization and introduced it to them. So instead of having this just, you know, customer satisfaction uh, scores that they were looking at, I brought new metrics into the organization, that being one of them. But there were a whole lot of other ones that I worked on and developed at the time. So it was a learning, working hands-on working experience as you go along. So, I mean, and that was from 2004 all the way to 2014. That's 10 years. So I did all of that learning by doing, <laughs> learn by doing in a 10 year span before uh, 2014. Now that was a very pivotal year for me because the company that I worked for was looking for acquisition. They were looking to be acquired. And to right-size the organization, they started looking at long-term employees, which I was one at the time. I had about, you know, 17, 16, 17 years into the organization. And they were offering um, exit packages to mm -hmm. those employees. And I thought long and hard about it. And I said, I think I'll take the jump. I'll take the leap, the leap of faith. Didn't know what I was going to do next, but I thought, yeah, I'll take the leap of faith and do that. And that was the end of my corporate career. It stopped in 2014. I, and then I should qualify that. It didn't really stop in 2014 because I started looking around and what else can I contribute here? And I actually found an opportunity Locally in the Boston area, I started working part time for a bank, which is an interesting comparison to the work I did in the corporate world when I was in a B2B organization. This is largely a B2C. So I kind of got to do what I did in the 10 years that I did in B2B over two years in a B2C. And I found that there are lots of times people think of them as being distinctly different, but from a customer experience, fundamentals and practice point of view, they're pretty much the same. You find the same issues, the same challenges and the same opportunities. So I got to play that out for a couple of years in B2C. But at the same time I was doing that, I, the wheels kept turning in my head here that people who want to be in the customer experience profession really still have the same challenges I had back in 2004. Where do I go? Yes, CXPA exists now. So you can join that organization and you can kind of do what I did and feel your way around and navigate your way around and learn from others and share with others. You can certainly do that. But where was the program that I would have loved to have back in 2004? If somebody said to me, here's a program you can go to that's going to prepare you for the role that you're in. I would have just jumped at the opportunity. I, I, I think I think this is this is really great what you're saying because that's what I also I did at the beginning. I didn't start uh, so early in my career in customer experience and therefore the CXP was already there. I was able to to participate to a master class and then uh, taking the examination, the CCXP examination, and and I went through this process and it helped me 
quite a lot. But I think what it's really interesting also from your career and your step, you developed your own uh, training, the CX Pro training and your certification course. And a few months ago, it came out also your latest book. Could you please elaborate a bit on that? Oh, I can even hold it up so you can see. Yes, I'm so happy about this. So this is a 175-page book that's really a compilation of the 10 years that I spent in the corporate world, in the B2, uh, B2B space. And it really is a, um, it, it, it's an outcome of the course that I developed. So I'm going to go back just for a little bit here because I developed the course with another colleague who was comes from the vendor side of of the of the CX world, and I was from the practitioner side. So we had practitioner and vendor mindsets building this course, and it actually started out as an in person back in two thousand and sixteen. I think there about sixteen seventeen, and uh, we developed it together. Um, we had students fly in from other locations into the Boston area to attend what would be a two-day full immersed two-day training course. And of course, it, I call we call it a certification course because there is an exam at the end. Uh, but it's different than the, the CCXP exam is that's the one that actually in 2014, as soon as I left the corporate world, I took that exam because that exam represented to me the, the capstone of my 10 years of experience of learning myself by doing and digging uh, a lot, right? So that was my capstone. And so I did that in 2014. To me, the CX Pro is a little bit different here. It's really intended for people at the very, very early stages of their career in CX. So, you know, I have people, I mean, I can, I can read off titles of people who are in my courses, sales and marketing coordinator, Director of Sales, National Accounts Manager, uh, Director of Central Reservations, Director of Digital Marketing, Partnership Marketing. Those are people who ne not necessarily have the role of managing CX, but they're part of the infrastructure within an organization that under that needs to understand what's involved here. Because it isn't the it tell you one thing, it's it's not a one single person operation. It really isn't. And there are a lot of people who are in that position, whether they be managers of customer experience, directors of customer experience, even vice presidents of customer experience often operate loneliness in loneliness on their own <laughs> in an organization where the others in the organization, other leadership roles don't really understand what the customer experience. Uh, world is all about and what how that measures into the business process and the flow of business in an organization. I mean, you would think that by now they would. I mean, where CX is probably in the order of 25 or 30 years old now. I mean, it's still a relatively young and new profession. So, but still, there's a long way to go with folks. And I'm really in a position now, I feel, of helping them get there and learn the fundamentals up front the right way, I think, is kind of setting the playing field, if I want to use the baseball analogy here, is setting the playing field for them because they don't have to unlearn old habits that, you know what I mean, that really don't work anymore. They can get the latest uh, of the best practices that, you know, are known to people within the profession and learn them and practice them because I do actually use this as a experiential opportunity for them so it's not just a lecture course it is a you know it, there, there are some lessons to be learned and some exercises to be done so you know we don't just talk about customer journey mapping for an example we actually do it we do it as a team that's the way it's supposed to be done we do this in class as an in-class exercise so there's a lot of that a lot of that's in this book as well because I try to make this almost a parallel to the course but because it's a book and because I have more time on my hands inside of a book I can elaborate and say more things so there's a lot of this course that you know you would attend you know virtually is built into that book as well but Thank the course is really, the course is really the place where you go to get the CX pro certification so 
Thank you, Carl. Uh, for the people listening to this episode, uh, Carl showed two times the book. The book name is CX Pro, a practical guide for the new customer experience manager. You will find all the information also in the show notes. Therefore, uh, you can click on this link and you will find the book and, and, the, and the courses. Yep. Uh, what it's really interesting also from your career, it's also painting and music. You are an artist. And how this discipline or art influence your working customer experience? Well, you know, from doesn't matter what profession you're in, you always need to get away from it and get distance from it because the distance gives you new ideas and things like that. So music has been something in my blood for many, many years. I mean, I started playing guitar at probably around the age of 12, okay? But I pursued other musical instruments as well. And drumming was another one. And there's a good example of, and I'll relate this to the CX Pro, is in when I started taking drum lessons, and this is late in life, I was probably in my 50s when I did this. I took my went to my first lesson and I thought to myself, well, oh my gosh, I don't have a drum set. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I went very apologetically to my instructor, my drum instructor, say, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't have a drum kit, so I don't know how I'm going to be able to do these lessons. He says, no worries. You don't need a drum kit. All you need is a pair of sticks. Because until you learn the fundamentals, you can't really hope to be a competent drummer. And so therefore, when if you don't learn the fundamentals of customer experience, it's going to be hard for you to then develop the competencies you need to really be a CX expert or be a CX thought leader or be a CX manager and be successful in the role. So it's all a building blocks. And that's kind of where I, you know, quote, kind of where I see it from a musical perspective. And even painting is the same way. I do abstract painting. So that's a that's a, a style of painting where there's nothing really concrete that I can say this is what it is but it is in the eyes of the perceiver. So you look at a painting of mine and you say, I see this, I see that. So I show people and they say, oh, I see a ship in that painting. Oh, I see a tornado in that painting. Oh, I see people in that painting, but I didn't intend any of this to be here. It's what you see and what reveals itself. So, you know, to me, it's it's the diversion that one needs, I think, in any profession is to couple something. Because let's face it, you know, customer experience is art and science. So there's the art and the chemistry. Of course, you can go back to the chemistry, as we were talking about early. That's the science piece. And a lot of the science statistics will come into play in customer's experience, for sure. And art will come. I mean, when designing voice of the customer feedback instruments, you need to have a certain flair for the art of designing those instruments. And so that comes into play as well. And guess what I find is that almost everything is connected to everything else when we come right down to it. And so it doesn't matter what your role in a role is in business. You know, everybody has some aspect of connection to the customer because what's central to any business is a customer, right? No customers, no business, no profitability, no revenues, no success if you don't have the customer. So there's the common element here. And everybody has a role in that. But the tough part is understanding what that role is and how their role serves the customer in the organization. Hard one to get across. And you can't do it single-handedly. And this is why when you er mentioned earlier teams, you need teams to be able to do that. And I don't mean a specific team of people who are known as the customer experience team or customer experience group. You can have one leader in the organization who are leading the strategy and the initiatives, but it, 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 it's a matter of orchestrating all of the other functions in the organization around the concept so that everybody understands what their role is, what their part is, and how that contributes to the whole in the end. Because it's all a system. And that's another topic in my book, systems thinking. <laughs> so there you go. You don't expect to see a topic like that in a customer experience fundamentals book, but it's there. Thank you, Carl. We are coming to an end of this uh, game. I still have a few questions for you in the extra time, but it's yep. incredible. We went through military, chemistry, 
uh, working in a B2B uh, environment, moving into B2C, independent consultant, training, certification, and then uh, your book, Going Through Painting and, and Music to System yep. Thinking, what you mentioned the last. This is an, an incredible journey, and I really en enjoyed this, this discussion and all these learnings throughout your career. Now, in, in the extra time, a few questions for you. Uh, 10 years from now, we are back on the CX Goalkeeper podcast. Uh, what we will be, what we are going, uh, what are we going to discuss? <laughs> well, first of all, I hope we're both going to be here. <laughs> sure. So be present. That's that's one thing I hope that. You know, it's really funny. I don't necessarily like making predictions around things like CX, and I've been asked to do this many different times, and I have, you know. I'm hoping that we figure it out 10 years from now, hoping that we can look back at this and say, this is not a mystery anymore. You know, we've got this all figured out because it just seems like we repeat the same things over and over again. And we relearn the same things over and over again. You know, for most of the advances that we can point to in CX, there's a component of that, specifically customer service, that seems to get kind of diminish over time. And I don't, necessarily know why that is but i'm hoping that we can finally learn <laughs> how to master this thing after 10 years because i remember the 10 years that i spent in the corporation from 2004 to 14 i think that was a lot of growth and i couldn't imagine in 2004 what i was going to be thinking and doing in 2014 so i'm hoping that i'm going to be continuing doing what i'm doing but maybe just maybe the fundamentals will all have been mastered by all the folks who are in the discipline and in the organizations that we don't need this anymore you know we don't need to have these courses and these certifications because it's ingrained in our being <laughs> where we're, we operate that way that's the way we operate <laughs> that's a really a really good hope for the future and what's the best way to to find you to contact you the best way to find me usually is on linkedin okay and so if you just look up Carl Charisse on LinkedIn, you'll find me there. Um, I have my company is called Horizon CX. And it's a very simple email, Carl at HorizonCX.com. And you are responsive because that's what I did <laughs> to contact you. <laughs> and of course, if you go to Amazon, my book is there. So you can find me that way too. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. And now we are coming to the end of this uh, discussion. And um, the last question is the usual question. Is Carl's golden nugget, it's something that we discussed or something new to leave to the audience? Well, I think my golden nugget, and I came upon this quote recently here by this gentleman, James Arthur Baldwin, and he said this. He says, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And when you think about that, we think about how we can change organizations and things like that, or, you know, policies or even politics in some way, you know, it's like we need to face the change before the change can happen. You know, change management is a whole entire chapter in my book as well. And we talk about that. We talk about servant leadership. And that's what I think served the essence of servant leadership is the facing the changes that we want to make. And just, you know, we're not bypassing it. We're not sweeping it under the rug. We're not ignoring it. We're facing it straight on. And that's the only way things are going to happen and things are going to change. So to me, that's my that's my latest nugget. <laughs> I have many nuggets before that. <laughs> But that's the great nugget to conclude this discussion. The future one we can have in future because you are welcome back on the CX Goalkeeper podcast. Um, for today, I think it's everything. Carl, please stay with me. To the audience, today it was a bit a different episode. We unpacked Carl's career. I find it really interesting and amazing to see all these changes and this this great journey coming to to nowadays with this outstanding book that carl wrote cx pro a practical guide for the new customer experience manager and all the courses that uh, are offered to new uh, customer experience professional thank you very much and have a nice day bye bye yes thank you very much greg <laughs>